Hi, this is Travis Romine, and today we're going to be talking about my Southern California Edison electric bill with Tesla Solar, May 2021. Let's go. All right, well, this is part of my series on never paying for electricity again and never paying for gasoline again and saving thousands of dollars. So with net metering and my solar panels, what I send to the grid and what I receive, um, at the end of the year, I'll receive money back from my electric company and I won't have paid any money. So I save a lot of money on electricity with solar panels. With my electric car, I'll never pay for gasoline again, so I save tons of money on gasoline. And with the low maintenance on electric cars, you save just so much money. So this is part of my series on that. So um, I show my electric bill and I show my uh, production on my solar each month. I do videos on that. So if you like that information, like and subscribe and we'll get it to you. All right, some quick specs on my solar system. I live just above San Diego in the Temecula Mirada Valley. Um, my system is 12.24 kilowatts. It is 36 panels at 340 kilowatts. They're Q-cell panels that I got through Tesla. And my panels place face east-west with my largest array facing west. All right, well, one of the main questions I get is when you produce solar and you overproduce and you send it back to the grid, how much do they pay you for it? So I'll show you that right now. Well, here's the net surplus compensation rate, which is basically what they pay you for your excess energy that you send to the grid. This kind of explains how they come up with the pricing. I'll just scroll through it and you can read through it if you want to. And as I get down lower, it'll show the prices that they pay. So right here, uh, and this is all through Southern California Edison, and this is how much cents they pay per kilowatt hour, and it changes month to month. So the end of your 12 month billing period, whatever month that ends on, this is how much they will pay you for your excess kilowatt hours. So it says, yeah, for your relevant billing period. So I think mine's in January. So whatever it is in January of 2022 is how much cents they'll pay me for my kilowatt hours, which is not much. So you don't really want to overproduce because they don't pay you much for it. But I believe mine will be right around $150, $200, which should be enough to offset my basic charge of $10 to $12 that I pay every month and maybe a little bit over. So yeah, this is what they pay. I'll scroll down so that you can see month to month and year to year. So right there in June, it's a little over, what, two and a half cents. And as we scroll down, you'll see, yeah, somewhere between two and a half and three cents in some places. Look at that. January 2020, three and a half cents. All right. <laughs> yeah, they don't pay as much as they charge you when you use it. Um, December 2019. Wow. A little over five cents there. Not too bad. That looks like the highest I've seen. So as I scroll down past all the months in 2019, yeah. So it looks anywhere between two and a half to up to five cents, depending on the month. I don't know what uh, month's the highest, but that December 2019 looked pretty high. Yep, 2017, two and a half cents, between two and a half and three cents, it looks like, all the way to 2016. Yeah, look at that, October 2015, three, a little over three cents. <laughs> Fractional pennies there. Yeah, so that's basically what they will pay you for your excess energy, which is not much. So don't think that what they charge you for energy is what they pay you. And again, this is Southern California Edison. Look at your uh, energy provider and see what they, what they uh, will pay you for excess energy. It's just good information to know, but in general, it's not much. Wow. Okay, that's as far as I can go. September 2011. Three, three, a little three and a half cents. All right. So that's the uh, energy compensation they'll pay you if you overproduce energy. Okay. Well, here's my electric bill. It says amount due $3.79. Wow. That's great. <laughs> so as we scroll down here, you'll see that under account summary, it says that I had a credit for $7.01. And my new charges, which is the same thing as basic charges or connection fee, is $10.80. So minus the credit is $3.79. So just to give you a little background here on net metering, here's some information on it. Understanding net metering 
billing. You are billed annually for your energy charges because they can be offset by energy credits over your 12-month billing period. Any changes not offset by credits will become due at the end of your 12-month billing period. You will also receive a monthly bill. It reflects the minimum amount due each month, which supports the cost of our maintenance and operation for providing energy. So my basic charge is anywhere between $10 and $12 a month. So I have to pay that no matter how much my net metering uh, overproduction is. And then at the end of the year, all the overproduction of kilowatt hours that I've sent, they will compensate me for that. So that should offset um, the basic charge that I pay each month and a little bit extra. So that's basically an explanation of net metering, what you send to the grid and what you pull from the grid, grid and the difference between the two. That's what you net in net metering. So let's scroll down and we'll look at some more information here. Um, on the left here, your new charges due monthly. Even if you have no year-to-date energy charges, you incur some monthly new charges. That's the charge they charge me for being connected to the grid. So to the right, year-to-date charges. Wow. Credit 781.14, settled at the end of the 12-month billing period, on or about January 6, 2022. And it says you are in your billing month 5 of 12. So of, as of five months so far, I have a credit of 781.14. Now to be clear, I do not get a check for 781.14 or whatever that amount is at the end of the uh, 12 month billing period. Uh, the amount of kilowatt hours that 781.14 is equal to, I will times that kilowatt hours. Let's say it's 1000 kilowatt hours. I will times that by what they pay per kilowatt hour. What do they pay? Um, I just showed, so it depends on which month. Um, mine is January 2022, so whatever they pay, three cents, two and a half, three cents, four cents, whatever they pay per kilowatt hour will be, let's just give an example, four cents times how many uh, kilowatt hours that I've sent to the grid more than I've used at the end of the year. So that's just an explanation of that. And as they put it here, you do not owe any energy charges as of this month. Only make a payment for this month's new charges, which I do between $10 and $12 a month. Keep track of your year-to-date charges. Oh, I do. As, a, as you may have charges in the future, if you are a net generator and the 12-month billing period, you may be eligible for net surplus compensation. Yes, that's what we're looking for at the end of the year. But uh, to be clear, um, you don't really want to overproduce because they don't pay you much for it. So yeah, it's a little bit, you know, I'm thinking I'll get $150, $200, enough to cover my basic charge. So yeah, we'll scroll down, look for, this is just basic information. You can pause this and read it if you want to, but I'll just scroll down to some more relevant information like the big black box. All right, so here is my time of use. So on peak, mid peak, and off peak, those are just the hours. We'll sell in California Edison. Um, just to, you know, this does winter and summer. So they kind of break it down between the two because I just jumped between winter into summer periods. So they haven't broken down here, but basically between four and 9 PM is my highest rate. They charge me any other time, mid peak, off peak. Those are the same. So I try to use less energy between four and nine and any other time it costs me the same. It's weird they break it up into mid-peak and off-peak, and they charge me the same for both of those, but that's the way they do it. So this just shows the times for my uh, time of use. So we'll scroll down a little bit. And your past and current electricity usage. So this shows what I've pulled from the grid and what I've sent to the grid. So right there, consumption and net generation. So you can look at all those numbers. You know, they're split up between winter and summer just because I just hit a month. I went from winter to summer in the middle of this billing period, so they had to put on both. But at the very bottom, you'll see that I sent 1,313 kilowatt hours more to the grid than I used. So, yeah, doing uh, a lot of overproducing right now. But again, I bought an oversized system for future use. We're we'll getting a couple more electric cars and uh, using the air conditioner a lot more. So... That's where we're at with the net metering this month. So your daily average electricity usage, kilowatt hours. So it says two years ago. They used to have two years ago in here, but for some reason they don't have the information. So last year I used about 23 
81 kilowatt hours per day. And this year, <laughs> I used negative 4377. Again, I'm overproducing quite a bit. And with COVID, I haven't been driving that much for my electric car. When I got the uh, solar, I plan for driving a lot more and have more electric cars. But yeah, this is good information on your history. So as you can see, you know, from June 19 uh, to June 20 there, you know, what I used to use and going uh, further. The electric company always raises their rates every year. So I'm planning for the future with this. So I'm thinking my payback period be under eight years, but we'll see. Uh, details of your new charges. Okay, so again, new charges, basic charge, connection fee, it's all kind of the same thing. They put all these little charges together and it's usually about $10, $12 a month. But to break them down, you see right here it says basic charge, eleven eighty five. I do have a care discount. Right below that, non-bypassable charges. Again, these are just little fees and stuff um, that are all broken down, but basically it's what you gotta pay to be connected to the grid. And so those are just breaking those down. So as I scroll down, details of your new charges. So it just kind of breaks them down, CTC, NDC, PPPC. Um, and some of the descriptions here, it talks about what all those charges are. You can read those. So yeah. So basically my new charge was $10.80. Um, I have a service voltage, 240 volts. My air conditioner is 240 and my, I have a 240 in the garage to charge my car. Uh, right below that, it says net surplus compensation option rollover. Okay. There's two options, rollover or check. Rollover means all your excess credits at the end of the year, they'll roll it over into the new year. Um, you would want to do that if you uh, don't overproduce and you have some credits right at the very end. Um, roll it over into the new year and you can use them. Well, I overproduce, so I can't use them because I'm going to make a whole bunch more next year, more than I can use. So I want to get a check for that, a check meaning um, money. So they'll just send me a check in the mail for, you know, I'm guessing $150, $200. So that will be changed to check. They told me we could do that at the end of the year. I tried doing it now and they wouldn't let me. So they said, okay, we'll do that at the end of the year. So things to know, this just breaks down some of the fees, charges, and information that's on every check. So you can stop and read those if you want to. Now this is new right here, things to know. Fixed recovery charge. Yeah, so this wasn't on my other check, so I'll read it real quick. Fixed recovery charge, SCE has been permitted to issue bonds that enable it to recover more quickly certain costs related to preventing and mitigating catastrophic wildfires while reducing the total cost to its consumers. Yeah, they're reducing our cost. Your bill for electric service includes a fixed recovery charge that has been approved by the CPUC to repay these bonds. The right to recover the fixed recovery charge has been transferred to a separate entity called the Special Purpose Entity. Sounds alien. <laughs> that issued the bonds and does not belong to Southern California Edison. SEE is <clears throat> collecting the fixed recovery charge on behalf of the Special Purpose Entity. Interesting. So I'm guessing in a nutshell, they're charging us to pay for things they have to do to the grid to prevent wildfires and maintenance the system. So this is a new fee, it looks like. So you find your plan on here, depending which plan you're on, and it shows you how much your fee will be. And it doesn't, it shows, you know, a few of them, five cents, three cents or whatever. It looks like it's by kilowatt hour. So that'll be interesting to see what that fee is. As I scroll down, see details of your tracked charges. Okay, so this breaks down how many kilowatts you've used and what they're charging it per kilowatt. So we have the winter and the summer. Again, both of those are on there because I jumped into the summer plan in the middle of this bill. So this just breaks everything down. Okay, you can look at all the numbers here, but at the very end, it says uh, after they net, you know, what I sent to the grid and what I pulled back uh, kilowatt hour wise and into a dollar amount at the very end. So this month, my energy charge total is a credit of 242.87. And as we look over here, additional information regarding your net consumption generation. So year to date, so far, um, charges total as the previous months, 538.27. This month that I'm in, your current month energy charge Total is credit 242.87. So, so far, year to date, my energy charges are a credit of 781.14. And here's the important number. Right below that, it says year to date kilowatt hours. So, 4,676. So, that's the number that I'm going to times times the net surplus compensation rate. Um, you know, the one that's two and a half cents, three cents, four cents, whatever it is, the month. I won't know that until the month. Um, 
January 2022, which is the end of my year billing date. Whatever they're paying that month, I'll times that, whatever it is. Let's say it's three cents times 4,676 kilowatt hours, and whatever that equals to is what check they'll send me. So I don't really get that whole credit back, 781.14. Let's say that was at the end of the year, 781.14. I don't get back that. It's the kilowatt hours times that uh, net surplus compensation rate. So... Yeah, it's a little deceptive there. You're like, oh, I'm going to get back $781 so far this year. Not exactly. It's just the way they do it. Um, the kilowatt hours is really what's the important number there. At least that's the way I understand it. If anybody has more information on that, I'd love to hear it. So, yeah, we'll scroll down, see if there's other any pertinent information here. This just looks like all basic information. You can stop and read that if you want to. Basic stuff, yeah. All right, so that's the end. Well, so far, saving money on electricity and gasoline's been working out really good. So I'm documenting all of this so people can get information, real world information for my situation in Southern California. So um, check your uh, place where you live and see if this stuff can work for you. And uh, like and subscribe. And I have a Tesla referral code down in the description if you wanna save some uh, money. I think $100 on Tesla Solar and you get a thousand free charging miles if you buy a Tesla car. So go ahead and use that link if you want to, and we'll see you on the next video.